Hey everybody, Randy Joy here, having a glass of wine this evening with you as we talk about Soulmates, Twin Flames, and the 1111 Synchronicity. So I thought I had already done a video on this before because it's something that I always talk to everybody about. You know, I do readings astrologically, I do, uh, you know, tarot readings constantly on this uh, topic, and I know that in many of my videos, I have talked about this and in some of my tantric videos and the different uh, chakra connections with people, but I guess I've never actually done a full video on this topic of romantic relationships and soulmates and the soulmate connections and the questions about twin flames and when will I meet my soulmate and um, do twin flames exist and all of those crazy questions, right? Um, so I want to address a lot of those questions with you. Um, please let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, it, there is a lag time between um, when you say something, when you comment, and what I see. So it does take me a couple of minutes to actually see any of your comments, just so you guys know. That's why there's a lag time. <laughs> yeah, Pam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is always a very interesting topic because especially in the age of Aquarius where we're all like learning through each other, everything's very tribal now, and um, we have Jupiter and Scorpio this whole next year, just started, you know, this past month, and it's just all about learning through other people and relationships. And, um, you know, this is a, a topic that for me, I, I struggled with a lot for a long time, and I did a lot of research on this, and I actually went to school uh, my master's degree, I have a partial master's degree in marriage counseling um, because I wanted to just focus on working with people with um, relationships, you know, intimate relationships. And uh, that's why, you know, I'm a tantrika um, and I specialize in a lot of uh, couples and love type issues. So I went to school for marriage counseling because I wanted to be an astrological marriage counselor. That's what I typically uh, have kind of gone towards. And I'm trying to get more into uh, working with people and their relationships. So in, in fact, we did cord cutting and that was about relationships. You know, as I said before, when you cut cords, a lot of times you'll have these negative cords with people. And when you energetically remove those, you know, it really helps you heal and the other person heal and you can come back together or you could just be in a relationship with that person and it'd be fine. It's not like you're cutting the actual relationship, you're just cutting the negative programs that are running between you. And that brings us to what is a soulmate, right? That's the, that's the big basic question. What is a soulmate? A lot of people think when they think of a soulmate, they think, oh, this is like the one person you're going to meet in your life that is just going to be like Cinderella story, right? Not true. And not true, not true, not true. And when will I meet my soulmate? You already have. You've met a lot of soulmates. Okay, so I'm going to come at it from that angle that I believe that we are all one source energy. We are all one, all one energy. Okay, I'm, I am coming from the agnostic realm here that we are one. I truly believe that we are one energy. And this, to me, um, I've said this before, I really believe that we're running on like programs in a way, not in a way that's like we're AI or something. I, I just believe that we are, um, that technology, as Se Seven says, technology is a plagiarism of the spiritual world, okay? So before you come here, you are programmed, okay? That's why I can look at your astrological blueprint of this lifetime, and I can tell you what mental problems you have. I can tell you, um, you know, what you were in your past lives. I can tell you what kind of karmic relationships you have, what type of learning experiences you have. I can then take your chart, and I can integrate it. It's called a Davison composite chart, and I can say what the purpose of this relationship is with this person that, you know, maybe you're involved with, or maybe it's your mom or dad. I can actually look at a composite and I can tell you the purpose of the relationship, the behavior of the relationship, what problems you're going to have. I mean, literally like all kinds of things. You can just kind of see the whole dynamic. Um, so soulmates are really everybody when it comes down to it is a soulmate. <laughs> I know so many people are disappointed right now, but everyone, we're all soulmates, okay? But here's the thing, okay? It's, it's, there's different types of soulmates. There's different levels of soulmates. So think about 
soul as like my brother calls it uh, um, like an electrical current. Um, I like to think of it as water in a way, because to me, it's like the ether, ether, whatever. It's very uh, watery. It has, it has a flow to it, right? So the soul is not, you're not like a soul, like a, a thing, right? You're like a droplet of water in the ocean, right? So everybody's connected, but some people are connected for many lifetimes together. Okay, so if you go to the other side, and as a regressionist, as a hypnotist, I can tell you that from our research, you typically will see the same souls, the same, they'll have like the same tone, the same frequency, and they'll tend to reincarnate over and over and over again, many lifetimes together as they learn certain things and they expand in certain ways and then develop spiritually in certain ways and evolve, right? So you'll have these clusters and you'll start with like primary and some of them, you know, there are people that are just, they keep going together every time, like, two two souls you know they'll keep reincarnating every time and so this can be like one time their mom and, and daughter another time their sisters and brother or brothers and then um now they're lovers you know because they you can that can happen and you'll be a soulmate but that that real close primary soulmate might not be your lover this time okay that might be your mom or your dad or a, a sibling or a best friend that you're a lifetime committed to that you just feel this amazing connection with so that can that is a soulmate and then beyond that primary you might have that one that's really 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 close to you then you have like usually about five right they say it's an average of around five right that are really close you know, and that's like, you know, it might be family. It might not be family. These could be, this could be you and a, you know, a cousin and, and two friends or something, you know. Um, and then from that, it expands and you have all the souls. I, you know, I should probably draw this for you guys. Um, you know, I have a lot of resources for this stuff because I've done so much studying on it. Uh, Michael Newton is, is one of the main researchers on this type of theory. And it works like this. Let's say you have, okay, I'm going to show you how this looks. Okay, I'm not sure what I could uh, compare this to, right? Um, but what you have here, which way am I going here? Okay, what you have here are clusters. So if you go to the other side, you'll see these clusters, right, of souls. And these clusters, you know, they're like smaller clusters. I mean, they could be five, they could be 10, 12, 15. And then around them are other clusters that are integrating around them, right? So they're like a cluster with clusters and clusters, and then there's clusters over here and they're connected. And so you see how that works, almost like cells of the body, you know? Um, so it's like you're working with these people and they're working with you and then they're working with them over there too. And so you have these like thousands of soulmates, and, and that's and, and a lot of times you'll you'll reincarnate with the same culture over and over again for a while. But then you can do I mean you can do gender switches, and I can see that in your astrological chart. I can see if you did a previous gender switch. I know that through my regressions and when I look at my chart, you can actually see it that I did a gender switch not this time but the lifetime before, and I came back as the same as the this last lifetime. You can see things like that, and it's pretty wicked, especially when you do regression work for years and see all of it. And then somebody looks at your chart and goes, da, 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 and you go, oh my God. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. Because they're an evolutionary astrologer, which is based on um, this idea of reincarnation and soul groups and how we're all really one consciousness, but we're like little droplets of water within an ocean. In a way, you can uh, kind of use that analogy. So so when people say, oh, do I have this soulmate that's going to come and or this twin flame? Well, let me go there in a minute. But really, it's about it's currents. It's like a, a current. It's like you, you feel that attraction to someone and you feel like you know them and you look in their eyes. and You're like, wow, that's a familiar homey feeling. That's because that's a soulmate. That's somebody that's closest in your soul frequency. It's about vibration. And that's why I'm all about vibe tribe vibes. Right. Because you're attracting the like vibrations and you're you're actually working together as a spiritual cluster and you're learning from each other and you're triggering each other and so when you're in that same cluster it's not that you're all like oh we're so happy and wonderful together it's kind of like 
we make each other expand. We trigger each other. And if I look at your astrological charts together, I can actually see the challenges. And the challenges, you know, it's funny. I, <laughs> you can actually say, okay, um, you know, this this woman has um, a lover that you know she's been with for a few years, and they recently broke up. And now she has this very new person that came in and you look at the chart and you go, oh my God, oh my God, they're so similar when you run the composites, those two soul connections to look at the charts. You could say, wow, a lot of the same lessons here, a lot of the same energy, same signs that are, that are within. It's very interesting. Now I'm not talking about two different astrological charts for a male and a female. I'm talking about running them together, synergetic, synerg energetically, <laughs> um, but you run them together and you can see that, that a lot of times they'll have a lot of the same lessons, especially if let's say she broke up, they broke up prematurely and they didn't work out a lot of the lessons. They decided one of them maybe stagnated, like the guy stagnated and left or something. Maybe he was, you know, an addict and couldn't get over it or something. Right. So he left and then she was still in this process of learning these things for her blueprint and so this other soulmate comes along and now they're working together on these very similar things and they're hoping and so it'll be a little bit different but it will have a lot of the same themes and that's why we get into patterns with people is because we haven't learned those lessons yet right and and you know it's funny when you're born you're born with you're born of the program, okay? So I remember being in a marriage counseling class and a master's program, and I remember the professor saying, asked, I think there was about 60, 70 people in there, and she said, okay, so if you have a, a child that comes into this life and has a tendency right when she's able to, like a couple of years old, she's organizing her shoes and reorganizing her shoes, and she's obsessed with organizing her shoes. Is that learned or inborn? I said, that's inborn. And she was like, how do you know that, right? How do you know that? Because most people would say that's learned. And I said, well, because I'm an astrologer. And when you come in, you have a program you're running on already. And so you have these natural tendencies that you're coming in with. And these past life issues and patterns that you can see astrologically. You know, I can look at your chart and say, oh, you know, you, you have a, a mom with, you know, probably borderline personality disorder, you know, something like that, that is causing you to have this dialectical tension with emotional issues and relationships. So it gets real specific when you get into the spiritual work and you get into looking at things like astrology charts or doing past life regressions with people or pulling tarot cards. In fact, here's another thing. This right here is the soulmate card. So whenever I pull this card for someone in terms of relationship, I say we're dealing with a soulmate here. There's a soul contract here. And take a look at this. Now, you know I wrote 1111 on this, right? Okay, we're going to talk about that. Right here. Let's see if I can get it up to the camera. You see that? This is the major arcana card number two. Major Arcana is a destiny card. This is a major fate card. Okay. And then you have two or Roman numeral two, 11, which symbolizes soulmates. So when you see 1111, you're, it's like a spirit, the universe, the program that we're running on is saying, Hey, uh, soulmate connection here. There is an issue. Uh, you're about to learn something. Um, you're about to uh, have a life-changing experience through a soulmate or with a soulmate. Either you are now in contact with a new soulmate or you're about to be. Um, so that's 1111. Um, whenever I get this, I'm always like, whoo, hey, <laughs> soulmate issues here. <laughs> and um, soulmates, another thing I look for in astrological charts is I look for tension. I look for big karmic issues. So if I see in your chart with someone that you have some big Saturn stuff or something like that's that's really intense, it's like very challenging for the relationship. I'm like, oh, look, a soulmate. <laughs> oh, look, you can stay together forever <laughs> if you want to. 
And that's another thing is uh, you you uh, can have many, many, many soulmates in this life. And you do, you know, everybody that's close to you, they're, they're, they're soulmates, you know, and, and the closer they are, the, the more of a uh, fre same frequency they are to you. So you don't have just like one soulmate. And in fact, I don't, I don't believe in twin flames. I'm sorry. Um, to me, that's a very romanticized um, myth. And I mean, it, it, the thing is, I, you know, all of this is theory anyways. And so everything I say could be completely wrong. <laughs> so I don't have any absolute firm beliefs on anything. Absolutely. But I will say that the twin flame theory from my research um, and the people that I respect, like Michael Newton and um, Edgar Casey, and, uh, uh, you know, just some of the people that I, I respect in the spiritual community that are teachers and stuff, you know, they, they haven't ever really said anything about, yes, this makes sense as a twin flame thing. I mean, yeah, there's a few out there that do, but I just, it, it doesn't resonate with me because um, uh, what the twin flame is, what they say it is, is that it's it's one soul that's split and i don't really believe that you know you have one soul that's split and now you're going to find each other now i do believe that you can be born into multiple bodies okay so according to michael newton's research destiny of souls and all of those journey of souls books um, again, he is a, a researcher, which is really cool. He puts people under, he doesn't tell them anything, does this over and over and over, over again for 30 years, right? Um, and what he finds is that you can actually, yeah, you can actually be born and choose to be born into multiple bodies, you know, two, three bodies. But the more bodies you use as you incarnate, the weaker you are in a way energetically because your power from the soul on the other side is having to go into multiple places in a way, okay? So that holographic energy or whatever you wanna call it is kind of being split up a bit. And so your focus is not in one. And so you might have two or three going on. Yeah, less whole. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that you would ever meet that other soul. I don't think that you're destined to meet that other soul and you're going to be together forever. I don't, I don't think that at all. I think that it's more like, um, you have, you know, somebody up in, in Canada learning one thing and somebody down in Florida learning another thing. And, you know, it's, I don't, I don't think they're ever really going to come in contact. Um, so again, I don't subscribe to the twin flame theory and that's just me from my research and in, in the way that I believe, um, if you do, that's cool too. We're all different. We all have our own realities. I just, I don't see it. Um, but soul groups, I just believe are just frequencies and ooh, my ring got caught with my hair. <laughs> I tend to put my hands in my hair a lot and then it grabs it. So anyways, um, I believe that there are synchronicities that will happen to show you, Hey, this is soulmate contract. Um, yes, you can have soul contracts with pets. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, pets are their soul consciousness. They're a different frequency, a different type, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. All life is soul. We're all the same energy, you know, and, um, that's a whole nother subject, but anyways, um, Okay, so Carissa is at Carissa. Carissa is asking me what happens when you're not really close with anybody. Okay, um, so you don't have to be. The thing is, um, everybody has different lessons and everybody has uh, different uh, paths, right? So you can choose to not. Now, remember, we have free will. Okay, so um, you know the the big destiny thing is. Are you going to meet the person, the potential, and are you actually going to do something with that? Because it's your free will. Everybody has free will. So just because you meet that person that maybe you're a soulmate with, it could be uh, somebody that you're friends with, it could be a lover, a potential lover. Um, when you meet these people, do with it what you will. We have free will. So you can actually take that and run with it in whatever way you want. 
Um, because once you have the predestiny to, to actually come in contact with a soulmate, you choose. It's choose your own adventure. It's not like, oh, now you meet somebody and now you're going to be married for 30 years. Well, that could happen. Um, you could stay together forever with a soulmate. Or if you want, you could have 30 romantic soulmates in this lifetime. 40, whatever. <laughs> it really is choice and free will on what you learn and whether you stay with someone. You're not predestined to absolutely stay with somebody. Um, you know, and that's the thing with reading cards and doing astrology and stuff. I can tell you, um, I can tell you that, you know, this likely is going to be the outcome here. And this is the kind of the path that I'm seeing, but one of you could stagnate. One of you could choose a different, a different path is very possible. Um, we can only read energetic possibilities. You know, before you come into this life, you can kind of see streams of possibilities that you're going to go through. And so if you choose to stay with one partner for a lifetime, then you're never going to be with any of those other potential partners. But maybe you're a gypsy and you decide, I don't want to be tied down. So then you have all these different partners that you have love affairs with and friendships with and companions, whatever you want. So it really comes down to choice. And this lifetime is not the end all be all. This lifetime is just a blip in your infinite, you know, world, which is forever and ever. So just going through this lifetime is like going through a dream. You know, you don't have to have the baby. You don't have to have the marriage. You don't have to have anybody. You can if you want. If you want to learn those things, if we learn faster, when we grow faster spiritually, when we have relationships with other people, because they are mirrors, right? Um, and a soulmate will be a very strong mirror. And if you don't like that reflection, then you need to change something about yourself. And sometimes we run from those reflections and we go, I'm not going to deal with those reflections. Instead, I'm just going to do my own thing and my own inner work and kind of be calm over here and chill and just stay away from me, people. <laughs> but just like tantric sex, when you have tantric sex, you ascend faster with the energy. When you move the, the sexual energy through spiritual connection to source, it goes so much faster with another person than by yourself. Because when you get more energy together, it amplifies, right? Just like when you meet a soulmate, you meet somebody and you go, whoa, I feel the energy here. That's crazy, you know? And I look at them, it's like, I already know this person. Have I met you before? All right, things like that. That's a soul connection, you know? Or that weird, like, comfortable, too comfortable energy all of a sudden. You're like, I uh, just met you, but we're, like, way too comfortable with each other. It's like, didn't we, like, already know each other before or something? <laughs> So I wrote down a bunch of your questions earlier and some notes. Does every lifetime have a lesson? Absolutely. Yes. Many lessons. Many, many lessons. Yes. There's not just one. Um, or every person you have a relationship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. You have contracts with people, with lots of people. Is it possible to end a reincarnation cycle? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, supposedly we have choice. I can't tell you for sure though, because I know that in my, one of my regressions to the other side, I wasn't too happy about my contract, my main contract, and I didn't really want to come back. So <laughs> I don't know. I can't really answer that. Uh, so let's take a look at some of my notes and questions from earlier. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. I did write down a bunch of questions from the Vibe Tribe community today, though. By the way, I don't know if I've been properly introduced myself. I'm Brandy Joy. And if you're not following me on Facebook or YouTube, it's Brandy Joy TV. And I have a closed community um, called Vibe Tribe. And uh, we have a lot of fun in there. We actually uh, just talk about... Uh, what we're going to talk about here, we talk about different spiritual issues and everything and support each other. So if you want to join, just let me know. You can send me a private message and I'll add you to the group. Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of people say, this is a question I was getting, you know, how do I 
will I ever find my soulmate? Well, you already have a lot of soulmates. Um, but depending on different factors is the type that you're going to attract around you. So if you want to attract higher vibration people, um, better soulmates with different lessons than maybe you've been dealing with, you need to raise your vibration. You need to change your vibration to be more in line with what that potential could be. So you could do things like, um, you know, meditation and tantric work and release work and more mirror work, right? That's what we do with other people. You might as well do it on your own a little bit and take it to the next level. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with self-acceptance. Um, we all have negative traits and doing mirroring work is when you work on your negative traits. I started doing that uh, around 2012. I really got into big mirroring work and, and mirroring work is where you um, write down your negative traits and then reframe those negative traits. So one way you can do this is you could say, I really don't like this one thing about myself. Um, here's one for you. I don't like that I don't have a very good filter and I just kind of just say everything, you know, whatever's on my mind. I don't filter. I don't have enough boundaries, something like that when I talk to people. Well, okay, that could be a negative thing, but how can we make that a positive? How can we look at that positive in a positive way? Well, you could say... You know, I don't filter much, but that makes people feel more comfortable with me, especially when they're having problems or issues. They feel like they can open up to me, you know, and, and so I can be vulnerable. They can be vulnerable. You know, the vulnerability causes intimacy and that's good. And it's very healing for people. So again, you can flip most negative traits. You can flip them into a positive trait. And so once you learn that self-acceptance of those negative traits, that will help you to love yourself and accept yourself even more. So then you're at a higher vibration that brings you up instead of having the negative self-talk. Now you have more positive self-talk, you know, that mirror type of work uh, where you're reflecting within yourself instead of reflecting with other people where they're like, Hey, you don't filter. Instead you say, oh, you know, I don't filter, <laughs> but let me look at that in a more positive way so that I don't hate myself for it or down myself for it. You know, so once you can start flipping things, raising your vibration and, you know, do tantric work, do meditation or meditation work helps me tremendously. I did some meditation work outside today and these energies have been very intense lately and it really lifted my spirits, made me feel a whole lot better today, I've had a much better day because of it. And you attract better things. So like energy attracts like energy. So, you know, your soulmates, you're going to attract you know, a, a lot of times you have your little cluster, right? You know, a few people or something, but then the, the soulmates that are outside of that, all the little ones that you're learning with, like the romantic relationships, a lot of times and stuff, they'll be coming. And it's like, well, do you want that one over there? That's like, you know, has all these really, really bad problems. They're going to really trigger the crap out of you and you're going to have a tough time and it's probably going to end. Or do you want to attract this soulmate over here? That's at a higher frequency because they've already been working a lot on things. Well, if you work on a lot on things and you're really self-accepting and stuff like that, then you're going to probably attract this better one over here. And I, you know, I say better, but I mean more developed. Okay. So let's see, to end the cycle, the lessons face learned and understood must be set free. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Patrice is asking me if they'll be together again. I have no idea, honey. I don't. <laughs> okay. So let's see. What else do I have on here for you guys? Um, yeah, and like I was saying earlier, some people, I wrote this down earlier, I was like, you know, some people choose not to learn through romantic relationships, um, and you don't have to. Soulmates don't have to be romantic. They, they can be just friends. They can be your family, sisters, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, some of the things that will make you know you know, that this is a soulmate. I kind of already went over this, but again, um, you feel like you know each other. It's like a very familiar homey feeling, like a comfortable, weird feeling, like you know them. And um, you'll have an amplification of energy where it's like, 
whoa, feel the energy between us. Um, and you'll have emotional triggers. Um, I had one where I just met the person and I felt a really weird emotion and I was like, oh my gosh, that's weird, right? So you'll just feel like a weird, like something might trigger a negative emotion or something and you're like, wow, okay, that's definitely a soulmate thing going on here because, you know, you can feel a lot of emotion with, there's a lot of trigger, there's a lot. And like I said, astrologically, I'll see a lot of <laughs> a lot of little challenging things going on there. Um, so, you know, and oh, with this Jupiter thing that we have going on with Scorpio, this oh, this next year, it's really pushing uh, for soulmate expansion. A lot of mirroring through other people right now. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, Ida, tarot spreads will definitely help you understand the lessons. Yes. Um, that's the great thing about doing things like tarot, um, I Ching, and uh, astrology is it can give you a lot of perspective. And actually, um, regression work gives you a lot of perspective on those relationships as well. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I love doing the, the spirit using spiritual tools and stuff. They, they're great self-development tools. Um, so I'm in a relationship where I don't feel that either of us are comfortably close, but we enjoy each other. Okay. Interesting, Carissa. Um, maybe you just, you have something going on, something maybe, um, you know, sometimes you can be with someone for a little while where you you both need something out of it. So, for instance, maybe you need some peace and calm in your life and this person is bringing that to your life. You know, that that can definitely be a thing. You know, maybe you've had a lot of chaos and you've gone through a lot and you need some healing. So this person can be part of that healing process for you. You know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's all about evolving and that's really what they're there for. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a couple of good questions here. Yeah, you want to do so yeah, cord cutting. If they try to make you do bad things, that's um you go with how you feel, you know, and you have some self-development to do if you're if you're with someone like that. Yeah. Yeah, well that I've had that before, Carissa. I understand that, you know, and but that relationship did end up becoming a friendship. Um, what if you meet one that you feel has bad intentions towards you? Well, if they have bad intentions towards you, then I would suggest to remove yourself from that situation immediately. Um, to bring in a soulmate. Uh, the thing is, is your your soulmates will come least expect when you least expect it unless you do a lot of psychic work and then you go oh hey i'm gonna meet somebody today or i'm gonna meet somebody in two weeks and <laughs> all of a sudden you'll just know that but other than that intuition uh it will be usually a little bit of a surprise um when your soulmates come in it's you know you you don't really need to do anything to bring a soulmate but like I said, if you want to bring the, the, the better soulmates, the ones that are a little more developed, um, then you definitely want to do some vibration raising and by working on yourself, self-development first. But uh, let's see. How just to bring the, Yeah, so you don't need to bring in a soulmate. They, they'll just come. They'll just show up in your life. You just have to put yourself out there around people and um, you'll definitely meet them. You just get get around people or whatever, and you'll just meet them. It'll just happen. Because like I said, there's you have thousands of soulmates. You have a lot of soulmates out there. And whether they're romantic or not, um, it, they'll come at the right time when you're ready for them and they're ready for you uh, for that next learning curveball you're about to go through. And again, you can stay with somebody forever or not. It just depends on what you both choose. So if you go through a breakup, well, there's probably another one out there somewhere, you know? Um, are the energies of this month good for change? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can multiple contracts exist with one person from multiple lifetimes? Absolutely, Ida. Mm -hmm. The lesson might be to be strong and to stand up for yourself. Absolutely. To really um, self-develop. Yes, that's what it's all about. Um, ended a relationship where we both felt the electricity between us, but for two years he turned into a narcissist and ruined my relationship with my family. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, you can, a lot of times you do, you know, you'll, you'll feel a lot of energy between you, a lot of tra attraction a lot of times, and you might have something to learn from that relationship, you know? And when you, when you end it prematurely, where you're both like in serious pain over it, that usually means you're going to be working on that issue again with that same soul in another lifetime, if not this lifetime. So there are times when I tell people it's not over yet. Maybe it is this lifetime, but it ain't over yet because you didn't work through the lessons you needed to work through. And so you're going to come back together, you know, and uh, some of the most painful relationships are ones that are unresolved and uh, the lessons are still there and the karmic that's the thing with soulmates. You have karma soulmates. You have things where you're kind of learning and expanding with each other and triggering each other and stuff. It's not like a fun Cinderella story. It's not like, oh, am I going to meet my soulmate and we're going to be happily ever after? <laughs> right. No, not happening. Not happening at all. It's more like, oh, crap, a soulmate's coming. Run, run. <laughs> 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 but you know you got to have fun with it and and just raise your vibration and try to attract better people there's a lot of how to um terrible relationship everyone is soulmate as you say has entered my life i myself have been in state of shell shock catch me in the cut off there giving up on love i think it does not really exist okay it's all lessons yeah well ernesto it sounds like you have some self-development to do honey um love is love is love you know do you love yourself you have to love yourself first before you can be in a successful relationship you can't hate yourself and think down on yourself if you can look at a mirror in the mirror and look at yourself in the eyes and say hey i really fucking love you and if you can't do that how can you find somebody to reflect love back to you if you don't have it within you already you know because like i said a soulmate is a mirror you know they're they're reflecting and if you don't like what you're looking at, well, then you better do some self-development. Otherwise, you're going to keep attracting that same thing that you're reflecting yourself. That's just how it works. Some way or other, but I was too shocked to actually respond to ever meet them. Well, okay, well, you can still, though. Hey, just put it out there, you know. Put yourself out there, self-develop, and you'll meet people. And that's the thing. It's... Do you resist or do you mingle, right? You choose. Any good books on self-development that you would suggest? <laughs> ah, self-development books. I'm getting hot in here. Ooh, it's warm. I'm in Florida. It's hot. It's hot. <sighs> Especially in Orlando. It's like a hot box in Orlando. I remember I moved here back in like 2004, three or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to go back to the beach side where it's nice and cool and breezy because it's like an oven. You open your door during the day and you're just like, oh, it's hot out there. It's like you start sweating immediately. Like I'm sweating right now. <laughs> uh, so any good books, Carissa? There's a lot of good books. It just depends on really what you mean like by self-development because there's a lot of ways to self-develop. Um, you might want to message me, you know, ask me something maybe even more specific, like what kind of book are you looking for? Um, you know, one of my favorite ways to self-develop is through tarot cards, um, you know, just reading the tarot cards every day. So if I were you, I would get you a deck of tarot cards and start learning them, you know, and, and that's a, a good thing to do anyways, is to always work on uh, expanding your knowledge base spiritually so that you can keep developing and, and meeting better people. You know, I'm, I, I'm in a much better place myself and with the people I attract today than I have in the past because of all my self-development, you know, it really helps. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> I'm over here sweating <laughs> wearing this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Huh. I don't know, Ernesto. It doesn't sound like you're in a very good place, honey. <laughs> Negative five degrees. <laughs> yes, it's so hot here. But I, I mean, I love the heat away over the, the cold. I, I'm not a, I don't like snow or anything at all. I love the tropics. I love going to the Keys. I love going to the beach and the springs. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So how do you know when the contract has been fulfilled? Well, you just, you won't feel a lot of like tense attraction, like intensity and stuff anymore. Like for instance, I've had a couple of contracts where um, I was in romantic relationships and it just fizzled out. You know, we were together for a few years and eventually it was like, I remember one in particular, here's one for you. Very, this is very clear. Um, I was, I was not happy in the relationship. I mean, you know, I was like, we're good friends, but that's about it. You know, we live together and stuff. And one day he says, Hey, come over here and sit in my lap for a minute and talk to me. And I was like, okay, you know, it's weird. So I sit in his lap and he's like, so what kind of love do we have? And I said, I was thinking friendship love. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I was in my like mid mid twenties then. And he said, I think we have friendship love. He was really honest. He was a very honest person. And he was like, I think we have friendship love. And I said, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think so too. And he's like, well, what are we going to do about this? And I said, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm thinking, God, you know, we're so comfortable. It's been four years almost. Like, I'm so we're so comfortable together. It'd be so weird to like break it off, you know. But then the next day, I went to Disney World with some of my best friends, and we were at Disney. And I'm like, I am not happy in this relationship. And I like, I'm already attracted to somebody else. This isn't good, you know. And and he knew. He didn't really care. <laughs> and I was like. Yeah, I need to leave. And they said, yeah. And the one, my one friend said, just come stay in my house. You know, you can rent my, my own room. And I said, okay. So I went and got my stuff and moved out and called him that night and said, Hey, yeah, I'm not coming back. And, you know, he was like kind of sad about it. I was his first girlfriend, but you know, it, it wasn't right. You know, that romantic relationship was done. And so we remained friends and it wasn't like a real close friendship. It was like we'd be there for each other every once in a while and hang out and stuff. And then he moved out of country. So he doesn't even live here anymore. So we don't talk at all. He got married and stuff. And I'm happy for him, you know, and I've had other relationships like that. Like I have another guy. I was my ex fiance. We were together for years and um, eventually it just didn't work out romantically. And the funny thing is I was learning astrology back then and i remember i was in a room of 60 astrologers and we were all like uh in like a big meeting in class and stuff and and they put our charts up and they and everybody in the room said no <laughs> and i was like oh no <laughs> and uh you know in in that relationship we couldn't make that work as a romantic relationship we're soulmates we're like the closest of friends i mean we talk like for hours all the time but he lives in another state and we talk about relationships to each other. And, you know, we were engaged twice, <laughs> you know, but that, and that's a soulmate. It doesn't have to be a romantic lifetime partner. This isn't a Cinderella story. That's not, that's not life. The media creates these things and people create these things and they're not real. That's not realistic. You know, a relationship requires work and it's a trigger. You're always going to learn something in relationship. If you're not growing spiritually and the electricity isn't there, you know, um, well, you can make the electricity. If you've had electricity with someone, you can keep it going. Now, if there's an issue of intimacy and trust and stuff, then it'll burn out and it's time to move on. But if you have the electricity, you can keep it going. If there's trust and intimacy there, especially through things like tantric sex. Um, so you, it, let's say that you've been with somebody for 20 years and it's fizzling a little bit. And you're like, you know, it's getting kind of boring. Okay, well, then you need to like work on that. It's you need more intimacy. You need to uh, try something new together, right? But it doesn't mean that it's just time to move on necessarily. It could be that lessons were learned and now you have different soulmates you could go learn with. That's possible too. So, okay, I went on a, a rant there. 
I was with my for 50 good months and I was attracted to those second and no matter how hard I try, I still really love him, but he moved on. So you're saying we will come back together again in the next life? Possibly, Vena. It's very, very possible. So you had a lot of heartaches. I just decided to work on myself and stop looking for love. Yeah, well, that's fine. Sometimes it's good to stop looking around for love and just work on yourself for a while. I've done that for years at a time. Um, in fact, you know, I've been single. How long have I been single for now? Uh, almost a year and a half, I think. Yeah, about a year and a half almost. And before that, you know, I was with someone for a couple of years. And before that, I was single for years through my 30s. You know, I'm 40 now and I was single through most of my 30s. And, and I was fine with that. I, you know, I did a lot of self-development, a lot of spiritual work. I, I took a lot of classes and um, it was good, you know. And it made me a better person. It made me um, a better, you know, and when I do find a romantic match, then, you know, it, it'll be a lot better than if I wasn't as developed, you know. So that can be a good thing to spend some time alone and work on yourself and have a good time. You know, you don't have to have a romantic partner to be happy. Trust me, I, I have a few people in my life that are happy and they're not in romantic relationships. I'm not in a romantic relationship. I'm happy. I can be in a romantic relationship, but I haven't, you know, I don't, I don't have somebody that I'm like really connected to that I want to be with. I'm fine by myself. I'm having a good time. Eventually I'll, you know, connect with somebody I'm sure and have another relationship. But for now, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It, you know, there's a lot of people out there that you know, end up, you know, have kids and then, you know, they get cheated on and, and you know, and like, you know, life is messy and relationships are messy. So you're never going to have that perfect relationship. It's just, that's not how relationships work. You know, <laughs> thank you, Ernesto. <laughs> Yeah, and, and love does complicate things. And it's not love that complicates things. It's the love relationship, the romantic relationship complicates things because we are complex creatures that are in expansion and development mode. We are evolving and we're learning together. And so it's not that love complicates. Love itself is love, right? And... <laughs> when it's unselfish, unconditional love, that's, that's just a good thing. That's just love. Have you ever done heart chakra work where you open your heart chakra and you felt so much compassion that you just had tears in your eyes, right? Or let's say that you have been tremendously hurt by someone and you have so much anger towards this person. And then you do heart chakra work, heart chakra work, and you do, um, you do like a cleansing and then all of a sudden you have this compassion for that person. I suggest if you're in a place of anger towards someone, do some cord cutting, do some chakra clearing and do some opening of the heart chakra, you know, do some opening of all the chakras. And as you open them, that the compassion will start to flow and you won't feel so much conditional love like, oh, well, you hurt me. So I don't love you. I hate you. Instead, it's more like, well, you hurt me because you are obviously hurting. You're not, um, you know, a whole person. You you have issues and you're in pain, obviously. And that's why you're causing pain to other people, you know, because, again, you know, we're all reflections of each other. So sometimes we attract people we are in a bad place and we'll attract somebody that's also in a bad place. They might be in a worse place than you. <laughs> Yeah, Kathy, life can be short. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't really look at life as like a short thing. I just look at it as an ongoing thing. Um, I remember I had a dream of my mom and, or, no, I'm sorry, my brother and my my dad were in my dream. And uh, it was so many years ago, but I just remember the lesson. It was like this, you know, when somebody dies, it's just it's not like they're gone forever. It's just like they go back to the other side and then, you know, that relationship isn't gone. That's the thing. When you break up with somebody or they break up with you or die or whatever it might be, you do go through that grieving process because you have that energetic connection to them, but they're not gone. It's just like you, 
well, you'll you'll see them. You'll reconnect with them again, definitely. So it's and it's it's really not as bad as we make it out to be. Uh, soulmates and combined life purpose. I'm not I don't understand that question. Could you rephrase that? Are love relationships ephemeral? I mean, will they last even in the next reincarnations? Uh, Kevin, yeah, I was talking about that earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, love, love connections, you know, like love is love is love. I always say that. I don't really, um, there's romantic connection. Um, and then there's, you know, more companion connections. So we have different types of connections and they're with the different chakras. You have the second chakra down here below the belly button. And that's a sexual, intimate, vulnerable creation type of chakra where you connect with another person in an intimate way. And then you have the heart chakra connection, which is love. So you have the sex, love, and then you have the, um, the mental connection up here, right? So when your mental body connects with another person, you have a mental connection and you can probably talk and talk and, you know, learn with each other and uh, experience good times, but it's very intellectual. Um, and then you can have the heart chakra where you just, you feel a love for that person. You know, even if they hurt you, you still love that person. You know, I'm sure many of you have that and you've probably had that with many people where, you know, you feel bad for somebody, they hurt you. And it's like, I still care for that person. I still love that person. Even though they hurt me, I, I have to accept that it really wasn't about me. It was about them. That's love, right? That's that heart connection. And then you have that second chakra, which is that intimate, sexual, that very, um, you know, uh, intimate, vulnerable type of connection with somebody where it's like a, an electrical attraction, you know, and now when you have all three of those connections, that's like a super intense relationship. That's a really nice relationship. Okay. Mm, twin flame soulmates. What's the difference? Yeah, I was talking about that a little bit earlier. You might want to watch the replay and I'll, I'll post it because I don't want to talk about the same thing twice. I, but to just put it simply, I don't believe in twin flames. Um, do you believe that some incarnations and contracts have to do with a higher life purpose? I'm, I'm kind of just on the Q&A, you, you guys. Just so you, the new people that are coming in, I'm on a Q&A at this point. I'm already done giving the speech. So you might want to watch the replay in a few minutes when I log off. So then you can see where I actually talk and explain about soulmates and everything. Um, do you believe that some incarnations and contracts have to do with a higher life purpose? And con they all do. I mean, it's all about spiritual evolution. And you only... Um, you know, you're always going to attract people into your life that you have the same vibration with um, for learning in this lifetime. It's like you, you have something going on and they have something going on where there's some type of contract there um, where you're going to learn something. And it might be that you're going to learn something for a month or it could be that you're going to learn something for 30 years, you know. And, and again, that's choice. It's free will. So as a uh, as an oracle, when I read for you. I have to, you know, I have to tell you where it's going, but it's, it's possible that something can change, you know? In fact, um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm very much into research, right? Very much into research, you guys. My background, I was, uh, I'm a published author. Uh, I did scholarly journal, journal articles in, in psychology and uh, communications and everything. And I, I'm a total nerd, okay? So I like to do when I do something, I like to, I like to get lots of confirmation on it. So one of the things that I do is when I read uh, for my life, for instance, when I read on my life, I'll read on it and I'll read on it twice and I'll watch for synchronicities and I will then go to usually three other people for readings and uh, just to confirm. And I don't say anything. I just go to them. And they give me the reading and then that confirms to me, okay, I've got it here, I've got it here, I've got it here, I've got it here, I've got it here. Same readings to confirm what I'm seeing. And there have been times when I would get the same reading over and over and over again, whether it's my stuff and other people, right, saying the same thing and then it didn't happen. Right, now that is because someone 
change something. Someone made a different decision than the track they were on. It happens. So we can say the same thing over and over, so use the same words, same cards, everything over and over again. I do that to confirm and then something changes and you go, well, okay. That's, that's part of free will in this life. We can't control the universe, unfortunately. <laughs> we can try <laughs> and we can work to control it in certain ways. And there are daemons um, and there are people that work with daemons and things that can control certain things, but I wouldn't want to go there myself. I'm not into that type of thing. I, and I always ask spirit on things that I can do and they tell me yes or no. And my cards tell me yes or no you know, and doing magic and, and cleansings and cord cuttings and all of those things. You have to be very careful because they're there for a reason sometimes. Um, people that have the same gestures. I have no idea. Um, on the good side of things, I think that it's good that I've never got married. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. When do you think souls enter the body? Conception, will karma follow you into your next life? Oh yeah, karma's always around. Um, when do you think souls enter the body, conception, or later? Okay, so your soul, what happens is when, um, you know, when there is conception, a soul will come in and kind of start vibrating with that body to start to try to get used to the, the body. And then, you know, they'll kind of go away and they'll float around the mom quite a bit. And as the pregnancy goes and goes and goes, the soul goes into the body and hangs out more and more and more. It, it kind of goes in and out, though, in, until birth. It, so it's never like completely just staying in there. It's just kind of going in and getting used to it and vibing with it and kind of hanging out. So it's just kind of going, oh, let's, let's see how this feels. Let's get used to it. Ah, okay, I'm going to go out here for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, when fear is playing into things, then you're going to attract subconscious issues, unconscious issues, really. So here's here's the thing. We're like computer programs, right? And let's say we have, we have an underlying anger issue. I have an under, let's say I have an underlying anger issue and I suppress it. And so I always come off super nice, overly friendly, and I am just suppressing the hell out of my anger. And I keep getting in these relationships with these crazy people, right? Let's say I'm I'm female, right? I, and I'm looking for a man. And every time I get with a guy, he's like violent, you know? He's like this, uh, he has like rage issues and stuff. And I'm like, why am I attracting these crazy people? Well, <laughs> I probably have an anger issue myself or whatever type of issue. And I've been there before. I was like, why am I attracting crazy people? Oh yes, because I'm crazy. <laughs> and sometimes we suppress all of that craziness or those issues. And so we'll keep attracting the same, that same type of issue, but we're not owning up to it ourselves. We're suppressing it. And one of the things with tantric work and emotional release work is that you bring those issues out and you accept them and you say, you know what? Hey, I have an issue here. Let's release this issue and come to terms with this issue and understand it and where it's coming from, you know? Um, so what happens with abortion? Um, well, the baby is aborted. Just like miscarriage. I don't understand. Um, what happens with identical twins? Uh, it's just two souls. And again, remember, we're all the same current. We're all the same ocean. We're just droplets of the same ocean water. Does the soul go back? Yeah, absolutely. Where do you think it would go? <laughs> Where would you think it would go? Yeah. I mean, souls never go away. You know, they... It's, it's energy. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just kind of there, you know. And that's why I was saying earlier, you know, 1111, um, that has to do with um, uh, quite a few things, actually. You know, it's like we're running on zeros and ones, right? And you have that duality of 
of the other side in this world, you know, that spiritual connection. And then you have two and that's showing a soul connection. So if you're seeing 1111, yeah, you have something going on with a soulmate coming into your life right now. Any other questions? It's 11 o'clock. I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> you might want to rewatch this, you guys. Um, if you missed the beginning where I got into some stuff. You know what I'll do for you? Is I'll briefly look here on my notes. See if I missed anything I was going to, that I was thinking about earlier. Um, yeah, so soulmates, I was, I was thinking about this earlier. The purpose is really that um, it, they trigger reactions in you that need to be healed. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everybody. I hope that helps you to understand soulmates a little bit better and um, to stop looking for that one single person in your life and think, hey, be open to the possibility of a lot of different people in your life. Um, it's really about free will and there's lots and lots and lots of soulmates out there for you to choose from. Depends on what you want to deal with and depends on your vibration. So try to get that vibration up and you're going to attract better people into your life. You know, a, a lot of people think a lot about, you know, fatalism and, and predestination and say, oh, there's only going to be this one person or this person that left me. Oh, we have to get back. No, you don't have to get back together. Um, it's It's possible, but you don't have to. Even if they chose to come back, you don't have to. You, you, everybody has choice and free will. So just know that everybody's a soulmate and you have a lot of choices, you guys. So try not to narrow yourself and wait for that one particular person because you'll have different potentials come in. And you just got to kind of decide what you're going to go with. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everybody. Oh, you missed the beginning? Yeah, I just watched watch it because that's when I really got into explaining everything. You guys know I just kind of ramble at the end and do Q&A and stuff. So love and light. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. It's always a lot of fun. Y'all have a wonderful evening. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about some other interesting thing next week. And I'll see y'all on Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern for our tarot scope for next week. Don't forget. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely, Holly. Do some Tantra. I have a tantric course if you want it. It's at vibecourses.com. All right. Bye, you guys. Thank you. What is the stone and in, in the pendant? Oh, um, this is an onyx, I think. Yeah, it's a, I think it's an onyx. It's black. <laughs> Aw, thank you, everybody. All right. See you next time. Love and light.